Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a ridiculously easy and cheap mead using Walmart ingredients. Let's get started. So this mead used all Walmart ingredients. Now I am, I will show you in a moment one change that might make your mead better, but this basic one uses no equipment and uses all of those simple ingredients. So the, the recipe is right here. It is three pounds of mixed berry or really any frozen fruit that you want, a gallon jug of water, two pounds of honey, and some bread yeast. So I went and bought all of those things from Walmart. I bought the three pound bag of a mixed berry blend, which had a couple different kinds of berries, um, two pounds of, of clover honey like this. I also bought the gallon jug of water and bread yeast. So I essentially took and sanitized my stuff. You can sanitize, normally you wanna do it with brewing sanitizer, something like Star Sand, Easy Clean, anything like that because it's more alcohol safe, um, but you could theoretically sanitize with hot water and dish soap, but you wanna make sure and get all the soap out. So it's a little bit tough. Sanitize all your equipment so you don't run the risk of any bacteria problems because bacteria will ruin your brew. That's always step one. The next step, you're going to thaw out your frozen fruit or let's say you bought non-frozen fruit. You can just take that. I thawed out my frozen fruit. I then smashed it up. I literally took and punched the bag a bunch um, to break up the fruit pieces even more and took half of my water bottle and poured it out into a separate container so I'd have space for the fruit. I mashed the fruit into there and I also added my two pounds of honey and I shook everything up so everything was stirred up. So I put my honey in and my, my fruit and I shook all that up, topped it off with water, shook it up some more, and then I added about a, let's say a teaspoon worth of bread yeast to there, and then I shook it up even more. One thing I also added to give the yeast some extra help, they needed some nutrient, I took some of that same bread yeast, I put it into a little bit of water, and I put that into my microwave, and that killed the bread yeast, which, the yeast that are alive use the dead bread yeast. And it's kind of cannibalistic, but it helps the yeast ferment. I mixed all of that up and I went ahead and put my lid and cap back on. I did put a small piece of cheesecloth across the top and poked a hole in my lid so it had a spot to breathe. Now, this next step, I um, noticed that the the fruit at the top wanted to rise out and kind of leave some pressure. So every once in a while I would go and shake the container to try and dislodge the fruit a little bit so they wouldn't create a barrier. Um, you want to do that to make sure there's not like buildup of pressure. If you have a hole in the top of that lid, pressure will escape, but the fruit will still add a little complexity. So shake up your, your uh, lid every once in a while. Do it lightly because what you'll find is your yeast will create CO2. So just kind of jostle it lightly or open the container up, mix your fruit around just to let there be some um, space created and it also keeps the fruit from growing mold. What you'll notice is that the yeast will start to ferment in this liquid and they will start to build up and create a colony and eat the sugars, create CO2 which comes out and create alcohol. So that's where your alcohol comes from. It took about, uh, nine to 12 days for that brew to finish fermenting. And when I, I knew it finished fermenting because the I looked at it and didn't see any more things floating around and there was a large colony and settlement of stuff at the bottom. And that kind of said, hey, we're done. Still using no equipment, I took and, um, this was, was kind of tough, but basically I, poured into a jug, lightly poured on the side of the jug so I didn't get a lot of oxygen in, into this uh, jug for to collect all of what was left there. And then I went and I moved it back into that same container. I did get a little bit of the fruit and stuff, which was unfortunate, 
but I didn't use any equipment. So I poured that out back into the jug and I let it set for a few more days. It started to kind of clear up. The important thing here is the yeast are still alive. So if you were to put more sugar in right now, what happens is the yeast would wake up and start to ferment again because they're like, hey, time to party. So um, I decided at that point I wanted to back sweeten and there's a, a, an important thing here. I wanna make sure and put this in here. If you back sweeten a brew that is active and the yeast are still able to ferment, which mine would have been able to, yours will, they will kick back up. So you want to stabilize or pasteurize your brew. So that's what I did next. I added six ounces more of honey back to this thing. And then I went ahead and bottled it into these bottles. At that point, I pasteurized it, which means that I took and I heated the liquid up on the inside up to 140 degrees and I held it there for about 20 minutes. And at that, when it was doing that, the yeast are expelling more gas and honestly just they're dying, which is a good thing. And uh, I killed off those yeast. So that's how I made this brew. Now I'm gonna kind of go backwards in time a little bit and we're gonna pour this brew. We're gonna get a taste of it. All right, so I've got my pour of it. It's right here. You can see uh, it's not the most clear thing in the world. There is a little bit of stuff at the bottom and that's because again, not using any equipment means I had to pour everything and I couldn't really filter super well. Even though I tried to filter this one, when I moved it over out of that container the second time, I put cheesecloth on the top and then, I had not a great way to do this, but I essentially squeezed the liquid through the cheesecloth, which hopefully filtered out some things. Kind of, but not really. Ooh, yeah, there's a lot of like tart, uh, blueberry or raspberry kind of taste. Get some, I mean, it's a mixed berry blend, so you get a lot of different aromas. There's a sweetness on the nose, a little bit of alcohol. We are only about three weeks since I started this thing. So it's pretty young, pretty quick booze. Ooh, this is really, um, Honestly, the berry taste is is retained really well. It's got a little bit of alcohol burn, but 21 days is not a lot of time. I mean, it's got sweetness, got berry taste, it's got alcohol. It's pretty good. I would say that it's it's a very simple way to do this. Yeah, juicy, not bad, not bad at all. So I only really got a half a gallon from this after you move everything out. Um, or roughly about three-ish wine bottles. So that's a fair amount of alcohol. A normal yield from a gallon, it would be four to five um, wine bottles, depending on how much sediment you have. This has a little bit of sediment and things. So this is the bread yeast version. This is like using only Walmart ingredients. I did have to use like cork and wine bottles. You could bottle in beer bottles and other things with caps in swing tops and stuff like that. I just did this. So you might have to use some other equipment. Now, some of you have watched this and you've gone, okay, hey, I can do that, which is great. And go and I challenge you to make this. It's honestly a pretty simple recipe. Here's how you can make this even a little bit better in my opinion, with two simple changes. The first change would be bread yeast is fine. It, uh, it is not necessarily best for brewing. It makes an okay, decent, uh, I mean, decent brew. I have a feeling this one will take much longer to chill out and be like more enjoyable. It's it's okay now and it's pretty good, but it, it's got some things. Let's talk about changing to wine yeast. Wine yeast are more so graded and gauged for making wine or mead. Um, so I, in tandem with this project, made a separate batch of this with the same ingredients, except for no bread yeast, I used wine yeast. I used a Lauven um, D47 packet, which is a widely available wine yeast. I, actually, let me just go and pour this thing. Okay, so here in my hand, I have this wine yeast version. Here is the bread yeast. I'll taste test and then tell you the process because I feel like that's more important. I can tell you maybe as I'm going along. So, smelling between the two, 
Bread yeast has a little more uh, bright um, alcohol. You get a lot, of, a lot more alcohol in the nose. It does still retain fruitiness in those things and sweetness, but definitely more booziness. This one has a little more, um, less alcohol, more smoothness, more like butteriness. Let's taste it. Yeah, this one's more, more juicy. It doesn't have as much yeasty taste, which is something you see a lot in this. It's bread yeast. I mean, it's gonna float around for a while. This one's not nearly as yeasty. It still has the fruitiness and the sweetness. I think this one will age faster and be more enjoyable. So, wine yeast, bread yeast. Here's what I did. In the same process, I took my gallon jug. I took my three pounds of uh, mixed berries. I took my two pounds of honey, mixed all that stuff in. And then instead of putting in the bread yeast, I put in some wine yeast. I just basically dumped a whole packet of Lavin D47 into that. I also did do the whole boiled bread yeast thing because I wanted to provide yeast nutrient. Shook all that up and did one more thing. I took a hydrometer reading. A hydrometer is this little thing, piece of equipment you use to measure gravity. Gravity tells you how alcoholic your brew is going to be. So what I did there was I took a little bit of the liquid and put it in the tube. I floated the hydrometer in and I recorded the gravity reading, which I believe is about 1.100. And that tells me how high the ABV of the brew will be given that it ferments completely out, that it goes from 1.100 to 1.000. There's an equation right here. Took that gravity reading, put it back, put the brew back in, let it start going. It fermented the exact same way. It fermented a little faster, I would say it finished. Um, this one took about seven, what was I say, nine to 12 days to finish for the bread yeast. This one was done in roughly about seven to nine. And, which was fine. After that, I moved it over with an auto siphon and tubing, which eliminated the amount of oxygen getting into the brew. So I pumped it through, it has this, I mean, little thing. Pumped it in the glass container. After that, I did the same process of back sweetening it, and um, I put six ounces of honey into it, mixed it up. I back sweetened it like that. I took another gravity reading because I wanted to know what the final gravity would be, which just to tell you, there is a gravity at the primary, the beginning, what, how much sugar, how much, yeah, sugar is in the brew. There's a gravity reading after it ferments. This one went from 1.100 to 1.000 after it finished fermenting. After I back sweetened, it went up to 1.020. Back sweetened it, bottled it. Um, I did not put corks on those bottles when I was pasteurizing. I just put some foil over the top because corks will start flying if you don't do it right. And then this is our product. Here's some big things. You could go ahead and make this bread yeast version, which is, it's really not bad. It's gonna take a little while longer to age out in my opinion. The wine yeast is kind of the next level. If I were you and I were watching this video, I would first start with this one, this bread yeast, just to get your feet wet. It doesn't require any equipment. It does not require you to um, really work all that hard. It's a good stair step. This is level one. This is level two. All I did was I changed out some, my bread yeast for wine yeast, which is widely uh, accessible anywhere you go. And then of course I went and um, used some auto siphon and some other equipment. That equipment will take you to be a next level brewer and I highly recommend you get those things. This is a very doable thing for it, really everyone. Walmarts are accessible all throughout the world and I would recommend you to try this, try level one, try level two. You could do the whole wine yeast version without equipment as well. My cautionary thing to tell you is that you need to watch out for how much oxygen you introduce into your brew. When you introduce too much oxygen, it will oxygenate the liquid. And if you've had wine that has sat out for too long, it gets real gross. Same thing for mead. When it has too much oxygen, it oxygenates and changes and goes bad. So auto siphons help with that. Hydrometers make you a better brewer because you can actually know how alcoholic your brew is. I can assume that this is 13% 
but only because I know that this is 13%. So hydrometers help. My last cautionary thing, whenever you are brewing and you are back sweetening, you have to pasteurize or stabilize. Pasteurizing is that heating of the liquid to kill off the yeast, essentially. Stabilizing would be using potassium sorbate, metabisulfite. Do not back sweeten something and uh, without having without knowing you're gonna pasteurize or without having stabilized. You will create a bottle bomb, which is essentially where the yeast wake back up, they start fermenting again, and they will blow up a bottle. And I've seen it before, I've seen photos, and it is terrible. Don't blow up a bottle and hurt yourself. So, go make a Walmart mead. I hope this video does well. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope you'll hit like and subscribe. I've got a bunch of other mead recipes. This is probably the most basic level of mead making. It will get you going and started. There are levels above that are a lot of fun. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this. I will catch you in a future video. See you then.